Good night. Around Dodge City and in the territory out west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. And that's with a state marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke is the story of the violence that moved west with young America. So to my story. Me, Matt Morgan, U.S. Marshal. I'm the first man they look for, the last they want to meet. Oh, it's a mighty hot day. One of those sweat-filled days when everything's a temper-stretching effort. That's why I'm easing the veranda shade the law office, haunting in a chair and hoping nobody will start any trouble. Not today. I try not to notice a trail-stained Bronx dust and sun street with a quick lope, but I can't help it. Up looking at its rider, dried out individual, a stranger to dodge. Yeah, there's nothing unusual in that. Sure. But didn't you notice his gun holsters? Both empty. Howdy, Marshal. Ed Silk. Give a man a start coming up close like that. <laughs> hey, uh, I uh, see you looking at the rider. Yeah. You know it? No. A stranger, eh? To me. Hmm. Uh, you seen his gun holsters? I did. Uh, don't think it right, Marshal. Uh, hmm? fellow with his appearance, lower end of a city like this, and both his holsters gaping on account of no gun. Uh, think it right to you? Oh, there could be plenty of explanations, Ed. Plenty. Uh, that ain't in dispute. What are you getting at, then? So, our strangers reined in at the gunnies, huh? Yes, I'll drift along and have a word with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of curious for sure, ain't it, Marshal? <laughs> kind of? Yeah. Uh, mind if I uh, drift with you? No, stick around here, Ed. Too hot for you to get involved. Won't be long. Sure's a trail stained fella. Saddle well used. Rifle and holster and war set. Yeah, trail stained and trail worn. See you here talking a brand that I know. Ain't gonna steal my yeah. horse, Mr. Nosey. You're the second man to sneak up behind me today. Maybe you're the kind need sneaking up on. What's your name, Cowboy? I done wore out a lot, but I got myself a fresh bunch. Wanna take a pick? Cowboy, you're a stranger to Dodge. Maybe. Maybe that's why you don't recognize me. Who are you? The local man? The sawbones or undertaker? Let's go. Oh, I've gotta buy me a drink, huh? <laughs> I sure got a thirst. Treat you to a glass of tonic water. Tonic water? <laughs> say, what kind of hungry are you? Stranger, if you don't do as I say... Hey, then... hey, hey, Marshal. Uh, Marshal, uh, you want any help? No, not yet. Mm. So, uh, bought yourself a couple of new 45s, hmm? If you're the Marshal of this here one horse down, why don't you have your sign pinned on your shirt? Hey, hey, you watch your language, fella. This ain't no one horse town. This here's a properly constituted city, Dodge City. And this here's a properly constituted Marshal Morgan. So uh, you pick them words of yours better. All right, but being a Marshal don't give you no right to prop me up. No wrong me, Bronx. What's your name, fella? Like I say, I got plenty. You take a pick, fella. Your name? Hey, uh, mister. Friendly tip. When the marshal looks like he's looking now, it pays to answer truthful. Sure does. Temple. Curly Temple. That'll do. Thanks. Now, suppose you tell me how come the new smoke rolls, huh? I lost the other two. Ah, uh, don't tell us they just jump out of their sockets on you. I do tell you that's what happened. Where are you from, Curly? All over. Where are you heading? All over. Feeling hot? Enough. Fine. I've got a shady dark cell guaranteed to cool you off. Yeah, I warned you, Curly. You ain't taking me in, Marshal. Unless you answer my questions truthfully, I am. And suppose I told you to poke your nose out of me business or I'll knock it off like this. <laughs> yes. 
Hey. <laughs> ah, that sure did these all eyes good. <laughs> ah, I ain't seen a critter get buffaloed so quick for years. <laughs> yeah, knocked him flat in the dust, Marshal. <laughs> Come on, Ed, give me a hand. Sure. Lift him on his down, carry him that way to the cannibal. Hey, yeah, hey, sure, sure. Uh, I'll get his shoulders, Marshal. Uh, yeah, you get his feet and we'll uh, toss him up and across, huh? We tossed the hombre curly temple across his bronc, lead him to the calibou, stomped him in a cool cell, I promise. Ed helps by taking the horse to the stable, seeing that it's fed and watered with a good run down. The rest of the day, I find no other trouble than if they visit the curly. Well, he's in a meaner mood now than before. He tries to cut up rough again. So I give him an evening meal and the advice that he stays as is until he decides to stop pulling against the bit. Yes, yeah, seven critters, this curly temple. Comes next morning, and I find he's done his best to wreck his cell. I make him clean up the mess, but not until after he takes a few wild swings at me. And whether it's the heat making him like this or not, I don't know. But the heat stays with us for a week, for two weeks. And so does Curly Temper. Still mean, still bad tempered. I'm out in the veranda when I see Ed Silk once more. Yeah. Yeah, and this hombre's talking wild talk, Marshal. Uh, saying that not even you can keep his part Curly locked up in no calaboose. That's so. How come I didn't see him right in? Uh, well, he enters Dodge from the other direction, Marshal. Or uh, so I'm told. Have you seen him, Ed? Yeah, not yet. Uh, oh, old Katie comes busting out of the saloon and words me up about this hombre. Uh, he calls himself uh, Dan Brown. Dan Brown? Yeah. Uh, sounds plumb make-believe, doesn't it? Uh, you, uh, you gonna do anything about it, Marshal? Mm, which saloon, then? Uh, the Blue Heaven. Hmm, a little old joint. Now, one of these days, I'll close it down. All right, I'll go. Take a listen to this flannel, Ma. Yeah, well, I wish you luck, Marshal. Uh, According to KV, uh, this Dan boy is bad medicine. Uh, Pack him a couple of guns, too, KV says. Wouldn't have any more if I were you, Dan Brown. You're a local preacher against the man drinking? No, I happen to be the city marshal. Aye, the critter I want to see. Well, you're seeing. Brown's the name of me, isn't Dan Brown? But you know that already, huh? Yeah. He said it a moment ago. All right, you know my name. How do you know this? Inside your flea breeding hoose you got my paw on prisoned up. Hey, I'm by using the name Curly Temple. You see? So? So, you might call me his lawyer. You came to spring him. There's no question of bail as yet. No bail, huh? No bail. Curly didn't kill any critter? Not for the lack of trying. Well, see, we don't seem to realize me and Curly, we don't like no lawman. Like we neither of us like the other being locked up by the side. Oh, you know something, Brown? That's too bad. Yeah, it's too bad, sure. Well, it ain't so bad I can't fix Brown, there's a couple of hours left till sundown. That should give you long enough to pick up your bronc and be miles along the trail from Dodge. You order me out of town, Marshal? Yes, sir. On account I'm so far a law-abiding citizen? On account I like to stop trouble before it starts. To me, you look like the start of trouble. Marshal, you don't tell me you've got the skill. And quit the trail you're trying to ride, Brown. The part stays in the calaboose until he's fit to be released. All them without a charge and without a trial. What kind of law is that, woman? If I can avoid blood, then straight by holding any man in jail, then I'll hold him, you say. I'm holding Curly Campbell right where he is until he develops them horses. Oh, I see now I'm telling you, Stephen. I resent being overruled. You being overruled, fella? Well, if this thing's in a dunno what it is. Where are you the drawing? Brown, leave the fire water. Leave the saloon. Suppose I repeat what I just said, Marshal. Go ahead. Then I repeat. I resent being overruled. You're trying a man's patience outside. A drink, Warman. Pull off again. Do that and I close this place for 24 hours. You're the Marshal. 
Sorry, mister. Hey, what kind of place is this? Is this the car to lock? Leave it, Bob. Well, leave it. Now, outside. Outside? You're telling me to get outside. Why, you walk a tin bike where I can fall. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Carl, you there. Toss the sombre outside, huh? You're going to take him to the hoose, gal, Mark. Oh, Howdy, Ed. Yeah. No, I figure when he comes around, he'll realize he's going to done that, but too much firewood. And he's shooting off his mouth about how he was going to spring Curly Temple, huh? Oh, something like that. Mm. It's a strange Temple never mentioned it. Yeah, maybe he has, only used a different name. Hmm? Yeah, kind of hasn't caught up with the one this hombre's using right now. You know, his face is familiar. Yeah? Could be a sort of wonder, Dodger. Yeah, it could be that. Hey, hey, uh, maybe he's a bandit, huh? Guess I'll drift back to law after the church. Hey, yeah, but uh, what if you find out he is a wanted bandit? He's short of vamoose before you can get back here to him. Well, I'll be on the safe side. I'll get some of the men to carry him to the law office. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll lock him up. Hey, look up. out, Marshal! Look out! <laughs> Take off his flesh and sit in his bones. Anything to cool it down. Maybe it's because of this hearts and brain frying heat that what would be more or less normal and cooler. But then that seems all wrong. I'll tell you. In the Dodge a couple of weeks back, riding home, they called himself Curly Chef. He totes two holsters, but they're empty. He buys himself new guns, and when I question him as to how and why, he gets all fired salty. With the result, he's still cooling off in the whisker. Now, the next thing tying in with this loco affair is another hombre with the name of Dan Brown, who shoots off his mouth that he's here to rescue his part, Curly Temple. I find Brown in one of the tougher saloons. Speak to him. Conversation ends with me having a buffalo to coot. He's legged out of the saloon, and I'm with Ed Silk looking at him, wondering if he's got a price on his head, when the seemingly unconscious critter offers his lead poison. All right, drop your guns, Brown, or I plug you for buzzard bait. All right, all right. Don't get yourself all in a sweat. I didn't fight a kill. Hmm? And what did you fight for? Just to exercise your trigger finger? Doggone them slugs burned the air next to my neck. You lie. On your feet, Brown. Come on. Leave your guns there. Boy, I'm going to be touching the calaboose, too, huh? Yeah, first time I seen a maverick grin and say what you say. Well, let's go, Marshal, huh? Which way to your calaboose? Just a minute. Ed? Hmm? Uh, uh, yeah, Marshal. Pick up his firearms. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Hey, hey, uh... I had lots of use by the look of them butts. But they ain't not, if that's what you mean all the time. Yeah, the butts are black with age and use, Marshal. Yeah, see? Yeah. Well, now there's a law against that, huh? Hey, Brown, where's your mount? It's being looked after, all right. No need to worry. Go on to hang on to it till I pick it up. Brown, didn't you hear what I said? Where's your mount? Wait for his lever. Go get it. <laughs> Hey, Marshal, are you letting this critter go? Straight out of Dodge. Pick a trail. Marshal, what do you say I don't go? Sorry, but you're going. Mm, this sure is a local town. I take a couple of puck shots and a scary Marshal, and does he toss me in a husko? No. Yeah, the same thing I'm asking myself. Well, and if I find you still here after sundown, you'll be a sorry hombre. I've been in jail before. They don't scare me none. Who's talking about jails? You are. Well, ain't you, Marshal? No, I'm not talking about jails. I'm talking about giving you your guns back. Huh? Why? There's only one way to handle your breed. That's to let you make your play. Doggone. 
So there's your choice, Brown. You ride out with your hide unpunctured, or you challenge me to the draw. And I still ride out unpunctured? Yeah? What? You ride out? Hey, listen, fella. You ain't seen Grease Lightning with guns, have you? Sure, I seen Grease Lightning with guns. Seen it a couple of times. Yeah, but you ain't been in Dodge before. Ain't talking about Dodge. No, but I'm talking about the marshal here. I'm talking about myself. What? Say, you plumb loco, you feel you're as good as a marshal? We find out who's the fastest tonight. Don't we, Morgan? That's huh? enough talk. You're wasting too much time. Now, you listen to me, Brown. You ride out of Dodge before sunset. You ride out with no guns. Savvy? Sure. I savvy. Okay. Let's go, Ed. I savvy you're scared of me, Marshal Morgan. <laughs> But uh, you you ain't going to let this soured up Boston Maverick Brown get away with saying what he says to you, Marshal? Oh, maybe. Say, you gone plug loco? Why didn't you toss him in the hoose when he fired them shots today, you? Oh, that would have been playing right into his hands. Yeah, say, Marshal, I, I don't get your drift. Pull up a chair, sit down, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> now, look. Brown says he comes to Dodge for one reason, right? Yeah. Get his trail part Curly Temple out of jail. Yeah? All right. Next thing he learns, I've no intention of releasing Curly. Not yet. That's right. All right, Ed. Now, what's the best thing for Brown to do? Get himself inside the hooska. What? Oh, shucks. Now, listen, the critter's loco, but he ain't that loco wanting to get himself inside the hooska. Now, is he, Marshal? Ah, uh, that's the way it figures to me. Now, uh, what for did he want to do that, for God's sake? It's perfectly simple. It figures, too. You can't be a help to a part outside of jail. How else can you be a help? By getting inside with him. Well, doggone. I'll be a ringtail bobcat. You mean, get inside, and then at the first chance... They pull a break together. Oh, it's been done before. Sure, sure it has. But not to you. Not in Dodge City, Marshal. Well, there's always a first time for everything, Ed. First time? Hmm. Well, yeah, I guess there is a that. Hey, hey say, uh, where are you going now, Marshal? Uh, to see the hombre who started all this. Curly Chample. I still want to know why he rode in without guns. <laughs> Story, yeah. You're still a liar. All right. Congratulations. What? I'm beginning to get some sense. Even up to yesterday, if I called you a liar, Curly, you'd be clawing the ceiling by now. Maybe. All right, it's enough beating around the bush. What's the true story, Curly? If I tell you, you promise not to spread it around? Yes, I promise. Ah, uh, since I've been here, Marshal, you call me a fool, a galoot, and a brain that's no good. You call me that and a few other things. All right, so you do. And so you're correct. I'm the biggest dumb critter of a plum loco fool that ever fought leather. Now you remind me of somebody. Yeah, you rode the Al Hoot Trail, huh? I'm no bandit. I'm just a plain fool, I tell you. Uh huh. You see, uh, I didn't lose me guns. Ah, you had them stolen. No, I, I threw them away, tossed them in a the river. Why? When I, my tongue, I was yellow. Look, Curly, what do you say we straight from the beginning of the trail, eh? Now, why toss away your guns? The law after you? Not the law. Just a hombre, a gambler. A gambler I call a cheat. And who threatened to kill me next time we meet. 
Well, who's the gambler? He calls himself Brown. Dan Brown. Dan Brown. What's he look like? Uh, tall, lean, dark, mean looking with a kind of side glance, you know. Yeah, I know. Over in Montana it was. I was carrying a roll. Six months pay and then some. I got in a car game with this Brown. He packed the roll to him. And the way some car shop works, he, well, he let me win a lot from him. Then he started to move in. The idea being to get it back, then skin me out clean. But you figured his move, huh? Yeah, sure. And he knew it when I picked up all my winnings and called it a game. I see. Well, I wasn't packing my side irons that night. And Dan Brown's fingers was itching so much. Know what he did? Huh. He told me to go and get me guns and we'd meet any place I care to nominate. Only you didn't care. Marshal, I grabbed me brunt, me war second, all me belongings, and lit out of Montana like the devil himself was after me. Yeah. And he was. This Dan Brown's a devil himself. I see. So that's why you've been getting yourself kept in the calaboose for these weeks. Open Brown would lose your trail. Is that it? Yeah, well... Yeah, I guess that's it, Marshal. Mm -hmm. And on your way here, you tossed out your guns? Yeah, on account I figured if, if this crazed loco gambler gunny did catch up with me and, and find me unarmed... Well, well, Marshal... Uh, hey, uh... Hey, well, what are you doing? You... You let me free? Yes, I am. Well... Oh. Why the sudden change of mind, Marshal? Guess the taxpayers of Dodge is fed and sheltered a yellow dog long enough. Huh? Fan the breeze. Oh, now, look, You Marshall. look. You go and look at Wakefield's livery. Anyone will show you where it is. You go and look there. Ah, uh, my horse there, huh? And your pard. My, my pard? Hey, <laughs> Me? I ain't got no boy. The fella you're riding out of town with. The one calling himself Brown. Dan Brown. Huh? Oh, don't forget to pick up your new guns. <laughs> Saves the law a lot of trouble, Ed. A lot of trouble and expense. Well, ding dad. You see, Brown is no more a card shop than I am. Uh huh. And as for that curly temple, they're both tied with the same brush. A bandit brush. By tarnation. Steady, Ed. Huh? There's Brown waiting down on the mm -hmm. Not in your life. Oh, Curly is the side of the face of... Hey, Marshal, don't you see this? <laughs> yes, Ed? Uh, don't I figure what? Uh, nothing. Are they dead? Oh, uh, they live for the trial. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's sure a cunning scheme, you notion out. Well, it's quite simple, Ed, really. You know, when I found those wanted dodgers, the whole story kind of unfolded. Temple and Brown were parts until they pulled a bank robbery together. Now, they had a fight over splitting the loot. Temple knocked out Brown, grabbed all the loot and forked leather, but in doing it, he lost his guns. Yeah. He knew that Brown had trailed him, so he decided to hide the loot and go into hiding himself. <laughs> and where better but in jail? So in jail, he's going again, only this time, with his pard, and they're going to stay there for a long, long time. Join us again next week as Matt Morgan... 
fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke is written by Ronald Ingleby and produced by Jim Bradley for Art Transfer.